What's up? I can't talk right now. I'm doing thyroid transformation shit. Today we are going to talk about how I transformed my life and my body in a matter of six weeks with my thyroid transformation challenge. Now, six weeks ago, or a little bit over, I posted this video. But what if for the next six weeks, leading up to my 35th birthday, 35, I really pushed myself to be even healthier. So what are the things I did over the six weeks to feel this good? Number one, I decided I would train every single day. Now, this is not something I'm telling everyone else to do. This is something that I recognize. One of the big things I decided to do in my six week thyroid transformation challenge Whoa, is that a tongue twister? Prior transformation challenge, prior transformation challenge was to push myself to utilize the things that I have. Not only that, to stop thinking about the things that are out of my control, especially with everything that is going on around the world at this point in time. I wanted to take away from feeling sad or frustrated or angry or unhappy, but instead I was like, I'm going to focus on the things that I can control. And lo and behold, I do have all these weights that are just calling out to me. Hello. Hello. I'm a snake. And I'm thinking I'm going to use them every single day day. The decision had to be also to dial back my training intensity. I know it sucks because I like to lift heavy. I like to hit big PRs. So for six weeks, in order to train all 42 days, I trained at about a 40% intensity. I did more high reps, low weight stuff. And on the days that I didn't actually lift anything, I did stuff like mobility. I did abs. I did skipping. I did conditioning work, like pulling a sled. And out of the 42, Two days. I trained 40 days. One day I took off because the day I decided to start my transformation challenge was actually like two weeks away from me testing my maxes and I didn't want to take that away from myself. So the day after I tested my maxes, I took a day off to just kind of rest my body. And then after that, I took one more day off during my period because girl, my body needed it. I made that decision and I didn't make myself feel like guilty or any other way about it. Number two, I decided to add something that most clients get when they have a trainer. Accountability, right? So when you have a trainer, you are held accountable for doing the stuff your trainer gives you to do at home. With a nutritionist, you have, you know what accountability is. I'm not gonna explain it. But duh. Because I was the one running the program. I was the one who decided to launch this transformation. I didn't really know who I was going to rely on. And because I wanted to hold myself accountable, I did that by posting all the meals that I was eating, on my Instagram accounts. So if you go to my Instagram page, which is X Shiba X, if you look at the highlights reel, you'll see the numbers one through six, and those are each of the weeks through the transformation challenge. And so what I did is I either shared like a photo every single time I ate something, or at the end of the day, I just posted a summary because it became a little bit too time consuming to be on my phone, the entire day, literally just taking photos and posting it as I was going. The interesting thing that happened in this process actually was that I realized I snack way too much. These were snacks that were just empty calories. I was just binging on things because, well, I have not much to do. I'm walking around the kitchen and I'm like, why not? And I have to tell you that to me was the biggest, biggest realization and change that happened in the six week period. Instead of snacking on like crappy things, I've started having snacks like seaweed chips, almonds, uh, just like plain popcorn, and then guac or like just plain unsalted uh, tortilla chips. You know what I'm talking about with like salsa or guacamole. That's it. In terms of sweet things, I don't really have a sweet tooth. So my like big obsession over the six week period to this day has become dates. Oh my God, it's so good. They are so delicious. I don't know why I was not eating them earlier, but 
and I can just like snack on them all the time. Now in keeping in line with the whole binging thing, one thing I also stopped doing was binging on social media. One of the worst things you can do for your mental health, especially when you're dealing with something like hypothyroidism and you have this involuntary gain of weight is to just keep yourself focused and busy in your life and on your health. Because you go on social media and you see all these like fantastic color filters and these pearly whites and smiling faces. It just, it puts you in this trance where it completely takes you away from your own reality and makes you think that your life is just somehow complete once you dive in and you start going through people's like profiles, you just get sucked into that and you just completely detach from reality and you're just like, I want to be this, I want to be where the people are. What I decided to do was that I was only going to spend two hours a day on social media. Now this also included the time I spend editing and uh, posting my workouts of the day, posting the foods that I was eating, uh, not only that, responding to messages or emails I was getting. So basically I was able to just hone in and shift all of my focus that I was spending on social media towards things that were making me better. It's really important to do the things that are good for your mental sanity and also to shift the focus into your actual life and like the things that you have and the people that you are surrounded with and the things that you can do and the stuff you have access to. I wanted to really focus on the things I can control and allow them to influence the way I see perceive and feel about myself. And I have to tell you that also made a huge difference. So for anyone who's watching this, whether you have hypothyroidism or not, and you're just looking to make a change in your life, I absolutely heavily would recommend that you take some of the stuff that I'm saying and apply it to your life and see how it affects the way you see, think, and perceive yourself. I know that's not grammatically correct, but you know what I'm saying. The most important thing that you can do during this six week thyroid transformation or any transformation that you want to do for your own well-being is to do it for you. When you decide to make any change in your life, make sure that change is being done with the best of intentions to better yourself. For anyone who saw the photos and just wants to know what did you do to lose the weight and look like that, understand that change will come. If you are healthy, you know, you don't have to be like strict with your life, but if you are overall practicing healthy, strong thinking, strong living, you are eating well, the change will come. But understand every single time you veer off path, every single time you make the choice not to do something, those are the times where you are only taking yourself further away from that end goal. Every time you choose to sit at home and watch Netflix or whatever, you are taking away from being the best version of yourself. Okay, I know, like, um, yeah, that's right. That's the end of my TED talk. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I truly hope this video helps you guys out and gives you a little bit of insight into what I was doing and thinking in that six week period. If you guys have any specific questions or you wanna know anything, or you just wanna have a conversation, hey, reach out to me, message me, let's talk, let's figure this out. And if there's any way in which I can help you, I will, I promise, okay? So until next time, think strong always, and we'll talk again very, 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 very soon. Bye. Side note, when it actually came to training every single day, understand that I was not motivated to work out every single day. Like there were days where I was tired, I had a migraine, I didn't eat enough because I got wrapped up doing work or editing. It didn't matter. The concept of relying on this idea of motivation to get my ass to work out did not exist. The basic principle was I had made a promise to myself that I was gonna take care of myself. I had decided this for myself and no one else that I'm gonna do it. And so every time I got up and actually worked out instead of just getting wrapped up in the TV 
or getting like smushed into the couch, I only felt more proud of myself. And that in itself was an incredible feeling. The end.